For the past 30 days, I have been obsessing over AI-generated stock photography. I have carefully created 150 of my own images and I have uploaded them on several stock photography websites that do accept AI generated content. In this video, I share my own method of using data and AI to discover what images to create so that they have a much better chance of selling. I'll show you a few examples of photos as well as a secret formula for discovering such hidden opportunities. If you are a beginner in selling stock photography or simply want to make this process of uploading your portfolio on multiple websites a lot easier and faster, I'll also show you a tool that does exactly that. Finally, I'll show you which of my own AI generated images got rejected and we'll talk about the exact reasons why so that you can avoid them when creating your own portfolio. Of course, I'll also present a few examples of photos that have been accepted. The secret to creating stock images that people do want to buy lies in just two words, supply and demand. You need to search for topics or themes that have high demand but very low supply. My favorite website for doing this is Unsplash. In contrast with most other websites, their trends page doesn't just include the keywords that are trending but also how many views they receive as well as the number of available photos for that specific topic. In other words, supply and demand. So the best way to find a good topic for your next photo is to calculate the ratio between the two and look for the lowest ones. For example, we can see that writing received 4.5 million views approximately from search the last 30 days, but only 78,000 photos were available. The ratio between the two is extremely low, so this could potentially be a good starting point for our next stock image. If we explore even further, we can see that newspaper receives close to a million views from search, but only 2000 photos are available. So in this case, we should definitely proceed with creating some images around newspaper or adjacent topics such as journalism or reporter and other stuff like that. In addition to Unsplash, you can use several other stock photo websites to see what's trending and combine that knowledge to decide what to create next. I found nine such websites you can use for this purpose, which I will include in the description below. If I were to suggest one more, that would be Adobe Stock, which also happens to be one of the few sites that accepts AI generated content so far. If you click on their Insights tab, you can see photos from the recent top sellers on their website. You can click on some of them and see what sells and use that as a good starting point or as a motivation for creating your own images. As you can see here, this modern living room was generated with AI and is amongst the top selling photos. So is this photo of a beer or this one of Bitcoin. Based on what I have been seeing for the past month, I would say that easily one in every five top selling photos on Adobe stock is AI generated, which is crazy. My last method for deciding what images to create is by doing good old traditional research online. But because we need to get with the times, I also added ChatGPT to my research pipeline. Of course, what I like to do is find a lot of resources from uh, bloggers or known photographers or maybe even stock websites and feed that information to ChatGPT before proceeding to ask any questions. Let's say for example that you are only interested in creating stock photos that have people in clothing in studios that are destined to be used for mockups. Then what you should do is search for uh, um, blog posts and other resources around that particular kind of photos, feed that to ChatGPT and then ask ChatGPT something like what are the most popular settings for such mockups. In my case I was simply looking for characteristics or categories of stock photos that sell best in general. So here's what I discovered. There seem to be two main characteristics that make stock photos more desirable to people. The first one is authenticity, meaning natural looking and less staged images of everyday life. And the second one was bright and vivid colors. In the case of AI generated images, I would add the third one, which is always aim to create images that are very difficult to capture in real life using 
real cameras. This is the unique benefit of AI images and will allow you to stand out from the rest of the competition. One example of a photo that would be extremely difficult to create in real life would be that of an older man surfing. I mean, how often do you see that happening in real life? With AI, we can create this relatively easily. Now, regarding specific themes, based on what I have found, these are the top five selling categories for stock photography. Number one is diversity and inclusion. These are images that represent various ethnicities, genders, ages, and abilities. Number two is sustainability, like renewable energy or sustainable living. Number three is emotions, which are settings that capture specific emotions or facial expressions. Number four is my favorite type of photos to create, which is abstract and conceptual. These are photos that convey ideas or tell a specific story. And finally, number five is industry and workplace. Capturing specific professions in action or their respective work environment seem to be selling quite well. With this information in mind, I have created 130 images spanning across all the aforementioned categories. I've also asked a friend to help me out by creating 20 additional images for me to test out. He goes by the name V. He's very good at creating AI illustrations, so I would recommend checking out his Instagram account. He comes up with some pretty cool stuff. All right, so now that my photos are ready, I just need to upload them on several stock photography websites. And for each individual photo in each individual website, I need to add a specific title, a caption, SEO friendly tags and keywords, all that fun stuff. But this is an AI video, so who has time to do all of that stuff? We need to do things quickly. Fortunately, there is a very nice tool that does all of that for us automatically. Wirestock allows you to upload your own photos, artwork, or in our case, AI generated images on their website and they take care of the rest. Wirestock does all the work related to keywording, captions, and tagging, and once your photos get approved, they distribute them across multiple content marketplaces without you having to do any additional work. As of the making of this video, the content marketplaces that do accept AI-generated images are Adobe Stock, Pond5, and Deposit Photos. In addition to automatic distribution, when you upload your AI images to Wirestock, you get your own portfolio for free to sell your content directly, create collections, and other stuff like that. Content creators keep 85% of the revenue generated from each sale. Please keep in mind that your AI photos need to be well upscaled before uploading to Wirestock, otherwise they run the risk of being rejected. If you sign up with your premium plan, you get additional features like extra 100 monthly marketplace submissions, round-the-clock customer support, a lot faster review times, and a lot other great benefits. Wirestock has made my experience with AI stock photography a lot smoother and easier. And if you want to check it out as well for your own portfolio, you can use my promo code to get an additional 20% discount when you sign up. Thank you for checking them out and supporting this channel in the process. And thank you Wirestock for sponsoring part of this video. Now, as I said, I have uploaded my entire portfolio of AI images on Wirestock and out of the 150 images I submitted, 120 were accepted for content marketplaces. This amounts to a 20% rejection rate. Thankfully, Wirestock provides feedback as to why each individual photo gets rejected. So let me share with you my failed images and the reason why they were rejected in the first place so that you can avoid these mistakes and achieve a higher approval rate for your own portfolio. Based on my experience, there are four main reasons why an image might get rejected. The first one is similarity with content that you have already submitted or with content that is on stock photography websites. Websites. As the feedback from Wirestock states, the image has a low chance of sales due to abundance of this type of content and might be a subject of rejection on agencies. So Wirestock is trying to help us out here by telling us what is in high supplies and therefore could very easily be rejected for other stock sites because maybe it couldn't sell as well as other type of photos. Now the second reason for rejection is lack of visual coherence. According to them, the generated images lack visual coherence, making them difficult for viewers to interpret or understand 
the subject or scene. So these are a couple of examples of images that have been rejected for this reason. Now the third reason they state is lack of visual fidelity. The image lacks the necessary level of detail or clarity, making it appear fuzzy, pixelated, blurry or indistinct which can significantly diminish the, its overall quality. This is an issue you can very easily fix by using Photoshop or by being more careful when upscaling your images. And the last reason is poor object proportions. The relative proportions of objects or subjects in the image are unrealistic or distorted, resulting in an unpleasing or visually awkward composition. I'm guessing that here they might be referring mostly to issues with face proportion, which AI tends to get wrong many times. Now these are a few examples of photos from my portfolio that have been accepted, but if you want to see more AI images from my portfolio that have been approved, I'll leave a link in the description below with my entire uh, page on Wirestop. You might be wondering, it's been a month since I uploaded my first AI images on Wirestock. Have I made any sales? If you look at my dashboard, so far I've only made $5 in my first month, which is a bonus you receive when you upload your first photos on Wirestock. The reason I haven't received any sales from other content marketplaces yet is because the review time for AI generated content on sites like Adobe Stock, for example, is more than two months. I know it's a lot, but we need to be patient at the moment because uh, there's a flood of AI generated content. So I haven't seen my photos out there yet. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait a bit longer before I am able to show you the full results of my portfolio. But if you want to see that, like this video and leave a comment below to let me know. So I'll make sure to uh, create an update video regarding my earnings specifically when my photos start appearing on other stock websites. For now, let's focus on using data and AI to create high quality images and build a strong and robust portfolio that has an increased chance of succeeding in the future. And with that, this video is over and I'll see you when I see you. Until then, stay hungry, stay foolish, okay, bye.